Hey guys, Tony Demore here from Demore Engineering. Welcome to video five. We're going to talk about RMS. Understand what this means. We need to understand what this means before we get into anything deeper. And in the last video, I was talking about what would happen if you plugged a scope into the wall socket and said that you would see a sine wave like this and that if this is zero volts here, this would be about 169 volts here. Zero again here, this is about minus 169 back to zero. And if you were to take your DMM and stick it into the wall socket and try to, you know, you set it to AC here and you try to read this, it's going to say around 120 RMS. So what does this RMS mean? How is it figured out? Why? All that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to get into today. All right, so RMS is an acronym that stands for root mean squared. Root meaning like the square root of something, mean meaning like the average of something, and squared meaning you square it. So it's different than average. This does not equal the average of something. They're a little bit different because RMS is assuming that you're going to be using these measurements to make uh, power measurements, basically. So let me just give an example something easy. Let's say we have uh, a signal here that uh, this is time course just like an oscilloscope and let's say from zero seconds to one second and this is volts and from zero volts to two volts let's say and our signal just looks like this. It's just a straight line we would say, well, the straight line goes from 0 to 2, and it's completely straight. So the average of this line is 1. 0 here, 1 here, 2 there. The average is 1. This is the middle of this thing. Okay, well, let's pretend that this is a DC voltage, and we're going to put this into a uh, 1 ohm resistor, and so let's see how much power the average power that happened during this time. Well, if we say the average voltage was 1, then power is just going to be 1 squared over the impedance. Let's say that it's 1 ohm, so it's 1 watt. All right, well, that's, it's not true because, remember, remember watts is voltage squared over impedance, just like we said here. Well, at this point, Volts is zero, so this is zero watts. At this point, volts is one, so this is one watt. And at this point, volts is two, so it's four watts. So you can see the average power is not going to be one watt because it's zero here, one here, four there, because the volt, the wattage is a you know exponential or not an exponential, but a power function of voltage. So this is why RMS exists, and that's why it's not. Uh, the same thing as average. So I'll do it for a sine wave so we can see, you know, sine wave is a lot more complex than this, we can see how that works. But hopefully that right there shows you that you can't take the average voltage to calculate the power. It has to be the RMS voltage when we're talking about an AC sine wave. So, okay, well let's talk about what is the RMS of this then. If the average voltage of this is one volt, then how do you get the RMS of it? Okay, so like we said, RMS means root mean squared and sometimes I can't spell very well so what happens to calculate RMS is you take a bunch of samples of this and you perform this root mean squared function to it so let's say at this point we have zero volts the first thing you do is square, it's actually in the opposite order here. So the, let's say we take a sample here and it's zero volts. And then we take a sample here and it's one volt. And then we take a sample here and it's two volts. So root mean square means we're going to square all these things. So zero squared, one squared, and two squared. And then we're going to add up the sum of all these squares. So zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four. We're going to add all these up, we're going to get five. Then we're going to get the mean. So we did the square, now we're going to do the mean. The mean is 
add them all up and divide it by the total of samples that we had. So we had three samples. So that's the sum of it. The mean would be 5 divided by 3. And then root means take the square root of it. So this is the RMS value of that, the square root of 5 thirds. And uh, I'll just do that real quick here so we can see what that looks like in decimals. That is 1.29. 1.29 volts. See, so we can see the average voltage of this thing was 1 volt, and the RMS voltage is 1.29 two different ways to measure something. And we use this one in AC because we're usually concerned with the power that this voltage is going to create. And this is the way that AC is related to DC is through this RMS function. So hopefully that shows you that average and RMS are completely different. Like I said, I'll work it out for a sine wave right now so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so here we have a, an AC sine wave, and let's put some values on this right now. We can, uh, we can pretend it's the one that comes out of the wall if we want. So let's say this is our scope plugged into the wall again. So we have, uh, you know, voltage is this way and time is this way. This is zero volts here. The peak that you see on a wall socket is about 169 volts here. This is zero again. This is minus 169 volts, and this is zero again. Well, there's not enough information in here to, to calculate this. We need to get some more data points in here. So let's just put uh, data points in between all these samples here. So we want to know what the voltage is at you know, at this time here, and so on and so on and so on. So let's, the time, this is one cycle, so we can call this 360 degrees. If we do time in degrees, we would have zero degrees here, 180 degrees here, and 360 degrees here. 360, obviously, is a full cycle or a full circle. So if that's true, then this point here will be 90 degrees. This point here is 270 degrees. So we want to know the value of this thing at halfway between here and here, which is at 45 degrees, and here at 135 degrees, and here and here. And this is going to be exactly the same as these because it's a symmetrical waveform. So how do we find out the value of this sine wave at 45 degrees? Well, you just get your calculator out and type in sine. 45 degree, you got to make sure your calculator is set to degree mode 5 or sine 45 degrees of uh, the peak value 169 volts. That will give us the voltage at this point right here when it's at 45 degrees. So just check that out real quick. Okay, so the sine of 45 degrees times 169 volts is 119. Point five. So this point here is 119.5, which means this point here is also going to be 119.5. This point here is going to be negative 119.5, and this one here, negative 119.5. All right, there's enough data points in this sine wave now to be able to calculate this stuff. All right, let's take a look at how we would do this now. So we're going to have to add up all these points and do the RMS math to it. So first is we have zero volts. Zero squared is zero. And then we have 119.5 squared. And then we're going to have 169 squared. And then so on again, 119.5 squared. Zero squared minus 119.5 squared minus 169 squared, minus 119.5 squared again, and then finally zero squared again. Well, we don't count that one because this is the same point as this. That's already one complete cycle, so we don't need that one. So do all these, 119.5 squared, 14,280 
169 squared, 28,561. So this is the same for here, 14280. This is zero. This, when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So negative 119 and a half squared is also 14280. 28561, 14280. Okay, so there's the there's the square part of the RMS. Now we gotta get the mean part. So now we have to add all these up. So it's gonna be that plus that one or two four two. Okay, and now to get the mean we have to divide it by how many samples we took. We took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight samples. Let's divide this by eight. We get 14280.3, and then to get the root means we do that, we square root that thing, and our answer is 119.5 volts RMS. And that's why when we plug our DMM tool into the socket, it reads 120, because that's what that tool is doing. It's taking samples. If you have a true RMS meter, it's taking all these samples and doing all this math we just did and showing you the number on the screen. Now, is it different than the average number? I guess we could, uh, we could take all these and not square them or anything, just take the values and get the average of them to see how to do it, or we could use calculus to solve it for the average. I um, guess we can do both for fun, so let's see here. The average of all these would be these numbers added up. Well, of course, if you take the whole cycle of the whole wave, the average would be zero because here it's going positive and here it's going negative. So in order to get a meaningful uh, number, we would just do half of it for the average. So let's do this plus this plus this plus this and see what that average comes out to be. So 119.5 plus 169 plus 119.5 and plus zero. We're going to divide that by one, two, three, four samples. That's the same thing again and I see 102 volts. So this is RMS, 102 volts is the average. So you can see they're two totally different things and the RMS one is the one we need because when we try to you know, talk about, okay, we're gonna put this into some load and calculate the power, you have to use the RMS number because of uh, how, we, you know, how I talked about it on that straight line. The power here is you know, not double the power at half of this, it's four times or whatever, so. If we wanted to solve this with calculus, we would just say that, okay, it's a sine, 169 is the peak, so we're gonna integrate a sine wave. From uh, half of the cycle here, so from zero to 180 degrees. Uh, in, and there's another thing besides degrees you can do it in what's called radians which would be zero and 180 is called pi and this over here is two pi so for this kind of math you have to use radians so we use radians so we can integrate 169 volts sine wave from zero to pi looks like this you work that out you end up getting you end up getting 169 times minus cosine of pi minus the minus cosine of zero and we'll work all that out minus the minus is a plus we'll bring this down here where we can see it change marker so you can read it so we got 169 times minus cosine of pi plus cosine of zero. Have to get our calculator out, change the mode to radians. This is gonna prove it though, I mean, this isn't stuff we need to ever do, this is just proof, all right? Radians, so cosine of pi is minus one and it's a minus so minus minus one so this is a one plus the cosine of zero is also a one so that whole thing is two 
So it's 169 times 2. And then we have to divide it by the amount of time that we looked at it over, which is 0 to pi. So 169 times 2 divided by pi. 169 times 2 divided by pi. And we get 107.5 volts, which would be the exact number. This was an approximation because we only took so many points. Had we taken a whole bunch of points, this is the number we would get. So that's the average value. That's the RMS value. From now on, when we talk about AC, we're going to be talking about it in RMS because we're going to be doing talking about power and talking about audio systems and things like that. And this is what we're going to be using. But we need to understand what this RMS means. Now we know it's super complicated. That's why we don't deal with it. We just know that it's RMS and the RMS of this waveform if as long as it's a perfect sine wave um, is just the peak voltage which is this 169 divided by the square root of 2 will give you RMS that's what this whole thing would simplify down to as long as it's a sine wave or if it's a different it's a triangle wave like that line I was drawing at the beginning of the video, it's different. If it's a square wave, it's different, etc. So sine wave, all we need to know is this formula. Peak voltage divided by the square root of 2 gives us our RMS. But here's all the proof anyways. There you go. Alright, so we've, comp we've simplified all that complicated math by saying that the RMS is the peak divided by the square root of 2 and this is approximately 1.41 so you can take the peak divided by 1.41 you're gonna you're gonna get the RMS as long as it's a clean sine wave so for our wall socket example we got 169 volts peak divide that by 1.41 and does it give us 119.5 like all that uh, intense math we did said Let's see, 169 divided by 1.41, close enough, 119.8 VRMS. So when you put that notation, that means that you're speaking in RMS and not peak because, you know, with a DC waveform, here's our scope and here's a DC waveform. How much can you say about this DC waveform? Well, there's only one thing to say about it, what the voltage is. 12 volts. All right, that's it. Boring. That's the only measurement you have for DC. You have, for DC voltage, you have that measurement, or to describe that DC waveform, you have that. But for an AC waveform, let's say it looks like this, and that, uh, this is zero here. There's a lot of things you can say about this thing. This is the wall socket example again. We can say, well, VP, voltage peak, 169 volts. The RMS, we just calculated it, 119.8 volts. How else can we describe this? How, how often it's going up and down is another thing. The frequency, hertz, or frequency, 60 hertz. What else can we say about it? How about peak to peak? Three hundred and it's going to be double this, so three hundred and thirty-eight volts. There's there's four measurements right there without even doing anything else just to describe this waveform. So you can see just that. It's a lot more complicated than the DC signal. Why do we need to know peak to peak and things like that? Well, we'll get into that later, but when you talking about power supplies and rectifying that signal and making an AC to DC converter, this becomes very important. All right, um, that was a lot, I know. All right, so let's talk about audio for a minute. Here's my scope, and this is zero volts here, 
And let's say this is the signal I'm looking at that's going to my subwoofer after the amplifier. So this is the output of our amplifier. And uh, the scope says that this point here is 100 volts. And this one here is negative 100 volts. Well, we know that if we put our, our meter on here, our DMM, and we hook it up to this signal, it's going to say, remember our formula, voltage peak divided by square root of 2 equals VRMS. So if we do that for here, it's going to say 70.7 volts RMS. All right, that's, that's all fine and dandy. Now, here's the problem in audio. If that's as much voltage as this amplifier can put out before it clips, here's what will happen if you try to turn it up any further. The signal is going to do this. All right, it's going to clip. It's called clipping because it's the waveform wants to be up here, wants to be like that, but the amplifier internal power supply doesn't have that much voltage, so the waveform gets clipped off. That's why it's called clipping, right? So we end up with this squarish kind of wave. Well, what happened to our meter? Should still be the same. The peak is still 100, but all of a sudden our meter doesn't say 70.7 anymore. Maybe our meter says 90 volts now. Well, what's going on there? Because we know that the peak's 100, and we know that this formula is for RMS. Our meter's telling us this is 90 RMS. It's because you can see, as it's clipped off, if we were to do all that math again and take samples, the numbers are, are going to be greater, and then it's going to stay at this 100 volt for a long time and come down. It's going to stay at this 100 volt for a long time. So that's, it, that's important for us to know in audio because this meter, I mean, you don't know if this is clipped or not, it's just telling you this voltage and, and the problem with clipping is that this and this, this is not going to be any louder than this is because the speaker cone, side view of our speaker here, how loud it is is how much, you know, how much air pressure this thing is uh, putting on our atmospheric conditions here, or our ambient conditions or whatever you want to call it. So, as the voltage goes up, the speaker cone moves this way, and as it comes down, the speaker cone moves that way. Well, you can see whether it's clipped or not, it's going to reach a certain maximum. As soon as this voltage reaches this, this cone is going to be here, and as soon as it gets here, the cone's going to be there. The only difference is, in the clean sine wave, it's going to be never stopped. It's just going to be moving back and forth this same amount of excursion here, or flex as you guys like to call it. And then the clipped one, it's just going to go out to here and sit there for a minute and cook. And then it's going to come down, it's going to sit here for a minute and just cook. So it's not going to make it any louder. In order to get louder, it needs to go further. So all that happens when you go from here to here is the average power that the speaker's getting goes way up, but it doesn't get any louder, and the speaker burns up. So this is why a typical DMM, you cannot detect clipping, you can't set your gains with this thing very easily because you don't know if this is happening or not and the meter is just gonna give you a big number and that's the same problem with clamping because clamping people want to take this number multiply it by the current which also has the same problem and then say that's watts and it might be heat but it's not actual useful power going to your speaker and then there's phase angle stuff and things we're going to get into probably in the next couple videos but um, I think they'll leave it at that. Let me assign a homework problem. All right, so that brings us to the homework for video five here. So what we have here is a clean, the blue line here is a clean AC sine wave that has a voltage peak of 100 volts. Of course, minus 100 volts down here. The brownish line is the same, this is the output of an audio amplifier, okay, the brownish line is the same thing but our gain is too high and it's completely clipped into a perfect square wave and it has also the same peak, 100 volts, 
that little P there so that we know we're talking about peak. All right, and we are running this into a one ohm load. We're going to use what we learned in DC about power to calculate the power. Now I know that I said in, in DC power equals volts times amps. In AC power equals volts times amps times the power factor. For right now, let's just assume that the power factor is 1. So we can ignore it for now. The homework problem is Knowing that these are just as loud as each other because the speaker cone is moving to the same point and to the same point, what is the difference in power? In heat, you know, power is heat. What's the difference in the amount of heat or power that goes into this one ohm subwoofer between these two lines? How much power does it get when it's unclipped? How much power does it get when it's clipped? That's this week's homework problem, and can't wait to see your answers. Leave them in the comments below, and uh, we'll answer it in the next video. Thanks.